The water hyacinth, an invasive weed that traces its origins from the Amazon basin, continues to wreak havoc on Lake Victoria. No one knows how it landed, but one farm has realized an opportunity to use it as a raw material in making animal feeds. We've developed a, a, a way of using the water hyacinth as an animal feed. So today we've come to see how much water hyacinth has invaded Lake Victoria. And as you can see, all of this is water hyacinth. The local community has witnessed its rapid growth over the years due to the impact it has had on their livelihoods and the environment. The water hyacinth, is, it really has affected uh, uh, the riparian community. Why am I saying so? We realize that by the time it comes, or maybe it, it, it inv invades the area, you know, one, the fishing community will not access their fishing ground. That's one important, the, the disadvantaged part of it, mostly. Second to that, after invading an area, it really, uh, it, re it makes most of the, the fishing nets lost. You know, when you go fishing, you realize that your fish, fishing gear, you will not find it there. So it, it's not another challenge which is facing the fishing fraternity. And on top of that, you realize that most of the, 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 the domestic animals, they cannot uh, get their water there. And again, at the, on the same note, the, the, the community around there, they cannot, so, they cannot also access water. Maybe, you know, uh, we, they depend much on this uh, water. One, maybe for drinking. Second, maybe for washing their, their clothes and so on and so forth. So it becomes a problem. In Homerby County, which is home to 80% of the lake, several interventions have been tried, such as introduction of a weevil, which was expected to burrow through the weed, but failed since the weed multiplies are much faster. The weeds have negatively affected not only the economic, but also the environmental landscape of this area. When, whenever we have a heavy infestation of the water hyacinth, we normally face a lot of challenges, especially the fishermen. Because sometimes when it is too much, it closes, like there is one sub-county called Rachuanya North, where almost all the fish landing sites can be closed. And that means that the fishermen do not go fishing. And when they do not go fishing, it means the income and the livelihoods are greatly affected. Uh, and even also the, the landings of the fish during that such a period is normally low. Another way whereby it is also affecting us economically is also that it changes the landscape along the seashores. You find that uh, beaches which were originally sandy are now uh, having a lot of uh, 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 hippograss on the, on the ground and uh, through that you find that even the breeding pattern of the fish has changed. Biofit Agritech Enterprises hopes to turn this situation around by using as much water hyacinth as possible to make animal feeds as a work towards restoring the lake's landscape. So how does it work? As you can see I'm holding water hyacinth. This is a whole water hyacinth plant. The, the place at the bottom is a fibrous root and these are stems and at the top we have the, the leaves. Biofit, we use the leaves plus the stems. Man is using the roots. This ones I'm cutting out. And uh, the roots can also be used for fertilizer application, which we are not, currently not doing. And this also calls for other partners who can come on board for fertilizer production. And this can lead to diverse, diversity of opportunities in water hyacinth plant, whereby it can be used for fertilizer production and also feed production using the stems and the leaves. Currently, the birding farm is relying on manual labor. Like a double-edged sword, it has its advantages and disadvantages. I brought you here to see harvesting of water in weed, which is used in livestock for feed production. Currently, we are doing manual harvesting of water hyacinth because the water hyacinth is in the off, off lake so as compared to when, when it goes to the middle of the lake and it makes it very difficult to access. And this is why we are using manual harvesting. But uh, we, we, we tend to use mechanical harvesting technique in the future. And this calls for investors to help us in getting the machines which can be helpful in harvesting in case the water has moved to the middle of the lake. After harvest, the hyacinth is then transported for drying and processing. Basically, after harvesting of water hyacinth, we bring it here for drying, and this raw one, and after drying it, this is how the dried one looks like for production process to take place. So what happens next? 
Yes, after drying the water hyacinth, then we bring it here for loading. And in the loading, it is crushed, then mixed with other feed ingredients to make it a complete for complete food for different animals. As you know, different animals require different feed resources. So we are able to make dairy meal out of water hyacinth, poultry meal out of water hyacinth, and even fish pellets. The demand for their feeds is growing, and farmers in the area are using the feeds for their livestock. Okay, when I venture into the business, when I start, I had to figure out where I can find the feeds. And when I consulted my, my fellow farmer, he told me about the, the water and tea feed. So I had to connect with him to provide me the feed when he goes for his. But unfortunately, in the course of it, it was running well, yeah. The production was good. The growth of the chicks was very good. It was, I can say the feed was perfect. And when it came to cost, <coughs> The cheese were relatively pocket friendly, as in the cost at which you are purchasing the feed will fit our pocket. So the, the feed, uh, compared to the commercial one that we buy from the shop actually, there's a big difference. To meet this growing demand, Biofit needed to increase the capacity of the equipment, which currently produces two tons of feed per day. They have so far received support from the Netherlands development organization SNV under the Catalytic Sustainable Agribusiness Investment Project, CSAI, which is funded by USAID under the Feed the Future initiative. The project has co-financed the purchase of machine which is able to produce up to 10 tons of feed per day. So what drove the project to support this firm? SNV decided to uh, pick agribusiness uh, enterprises that are interested, that are more or less having innovations that are climate smart in nature and biofeed fell into that category. Uh, there, is, there is a criteria that we use to evaluate which enterprise that we'll be able to work with and one of them was to look at the inclusivity. How inclusive are they? Are they working with the youths, the women and the men in that community? And uh, is, the, is the technology scalable? Can it be able to be scaled up? And how is it uh, environmental friendly now that the climate aspect in it? So ticking all these boxes, agri, agri, uh, Biofit fell into that category where they were using water hyacinth to uh, convert it into animal feed and in harvesting the water hyacinth they were using the women and, uh, and the youth in that area. In doing so they were creating pathway for the fishermen to be able to fish into the lakes which was a hindrance for the fishermen. So looking at that and being that um, with the recent droughts that we had in Kenya, uh, the, the, the animal feeds became very expensive for even the local farmers to be able to achieve. So they, by them converting, using water hyacinth to convert it into animal feed, it more or less uh, reduces the cost of of feed being that 90% of the ingredients that are used to, to, to formulate our feeds in the country are imported from our neighboring countries like Uganda and Tanzania. So the, avail the free availability of water hyacinth more or less reduce the cost of production. Going forward, innovative firms such as Biofit Agritech will be key in contributing towards sustainable agribusiness development as we also race against time towards environmental conservation.